Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming to Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the GeForce Turing graphics card, specifically a 3D Mark benchmark, which has a linked for one of these cards. It is either the RTX 2080 or the RTX 2070. Now, the score is just over 10,000 points. To put that into some level of context, the GTX 1080 tie will score around the 9400 to 9600 range. That, of course, does depend on whether you're getting factory clocked AIB version and that type of thing. Meanwhile, if you are picking up the vanilla 1080, it's going to hit around the 7300 to 7500 mark, once again, depending on the version of the GPU that you are running. So then, why is there this confusion with which RTX GPU we're seeing? Well, it really comes down to the fact that it's being listed as a generic card. It's listed as a generic NVIDIA device. And because 3 d Mark Time Spy in this instance does not tell you the number of CUDA cores, it's impossible for us to know which GPU. Instead, we do know that it's got 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory because we can see that it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and we can see it's running at 7 gigahertz. So that, of course, means 14 GDPS. In other words, of course, GDDR6. But which GPU it is remains a mystery. Now, there is some speculation to say that it could be the RTX 2070. The reason behind that is we've seen another slide that's leaked out from NVIDIA and they're claiming around 50 to 60% improvement uh, over Pascal, so one predecessor, so uh, let's say the 2080 over the 1080 with 3D Mark. So it's possible therefore that that performance does line up with what we're seeing here. So it is possibly the 2070. And of course, we have previous generations as well. After all, if you were to take the GTX 1070, it did beat out rather favorably the uh, GTX 980 Ti. So that's definitely a distinct possibility. The wrench in the works, so, though, is that the drivers themselves are really early right now. Uh, this is coming from various leaks and sources, and they're essentially telling us that NVIDIA are still optimizing the drivers. Which GPU it is remains a mystery. I do suspect, though, that around the 50% mark is probably going to be roughly what we're seeing with Turing compared to Pascal. Of course, that's assuming that DLSS and other technologies are not being leveraged. But even so, it's a fairly impressive result. Um, you can, by the way, check out a full article on this linked in the description of this video. And you can also check out an analysis of the ray tracing cores along with... Uh, DLSS and some touring uh, information itself uh, linked also in the description of this video if you so wish. Now let's move over to AMD because the company have announced a dual Vega car, the Radeon Pro Duo V340, which is designed specifically for data centers and other such scenarios. It is based upon the Radeon Vega 56 architecture, and just to clarify, we are looking at only the 14nm variant of this card. This is not a 7nm GPU. Each card will have a grand total of 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, and that provides 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. But the real kicker for these cards is that they work with MX GPU so that you can run hardware virtualization on graphics cards. That means you can run up to 32 VMs per GPU. We also see the inclusion of enhanced security engine, which should enable hardware isolation of virtual machines as well. As for the release dates of these GPUs, it's most likely going to be the end of this year. Uh, I know that's going to be kind of disappointing for gamers, but once again, we're still waiting for confirmation on what AMD are going to be planning for the gaming arena. And it's looking like at this point in time, it, we're going to be seeing Navi arriving at some point in the next year. And that, of course, will be what we're really seeing AMD provide uh, solace to gamers with. In other news, AMD are doubling down on 7NM. So currently, AMD are using both Global Foundries and TSMC for production of its chips, whether that's Ryzen, whether that's Vega, and so on and so on. 
If you were to look at Vega, for example, it's using 14 nm. Ryzen, of course, the next generation is using 12 nm. But next year, things are going to be changing for the company, and they are looking to solely focus on 7 nm. We have the Zen 2 microarchitecture, which of course will debut with the next generation Epic processors. That's going to happen uh, next year. And even this year, we're going to see the introduction of the 7nm Vega cards. But there's a slight hitch, and that comes to us from Global Foundries. Global Foundries have just recently released a statement and said that right now they are not focused on 7nm and below nodes, and they're going to continue to really push 12nm and 14nm because they feel that they are the most profitable right now, probably due to yields and that type of thing. So that means that... AMD will be focused primarily on using uh, TSMC in the longer term to provide them the parts that they require to ship out to customers. I also want to throw in a good piece of news for Xbox One X owners if you have Halo the Master Chief Collection, and that is the long-awaited update for the title is finally out. So now we have 60 frames per second with 4K UHD and HDR support. And they've also done a myriad of other things, including improved matchmaking, along with offline LAN support as well. And we also see a nice improvement in quality of life because they have also improved the loading times for the game. And while we're on the subject of Microsoft, let's discuss Xbox All Access, which in my opinion is a brilliant move by the company. It allows you to essentially lease an Xbox One system, be that an Xbox One X or an Xbox One S. That will cost you either $34.99 or $21.99 US dollars a month. And not only do you get that, you also get access to Xbox Live Gold, which of course is for multiplayer and free access to games. And then on top of that, you've also got the Xbox Game Pass, which of course is the game subscription service that Microsoft are currently selling for $10 US dollars. The one caveat here, though, is that you need to actually be in store to actually purchase this. That's right, you have to actually go to a Microsoft store. You'll also need to use the Dell Preferred Account Service, which is essentially a line of credit. Either way, at least in my opinion, it's a brilliant idea for Microsoft to just basically get more users on its platform, which is ultimately the idea here. It's just looking to bolster those numbers, which means that developers, uh, of course, are going to be more inclined to produce games, and it just increases the service for everyone. It's a great idea. It's a great idea to get Microsoft more cash. And for someone who perhaps doesn't necessarily want the outlay of like the Xbox One X, it's a good option as well. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.